So just to give you a, a definition, okay? So Euler's method is a numerical approach um, to approximate a particular solution. So to approximate a particular solution to a differential equation y prime equals f of x y now it's important that you guys remember that okay y prime is f of x y because you're going to see that f of x y come out in the formula that we're going to use and you have to understand that f of x y is a derivative okay so really important that you guys remember that's why i kind of like sectioned it off on its own line because i want you guys to remember that's pretty important okay so y prime equal to big F of x, y. Okay. And um, to a differential equation, uh, y prime, that passes through x sub 0, y sub 0. Okay, so from, from this information, you know that the graph of the solution passes through the point x sub 0, y sub 0, and it has a slope of big F of x, y. Like, we know that this is given. So um, this kind of gives us a starting point. We know a point to start from and a slope to follow, okay? And um, I don't know if you guys remember, but when you were in uh, Algebra 1, or maybe they called it Math 1 at the time when you were taking it, um, there were many times where they say, okay, can you graph uh, the following line? And they say the slope is 3 and the point it passes is 2 comma 3. So what you would do is you'd go to the point 2 comma 3. You put a dot there and then you'd say, okay, my slope is 3 over 1. So you'd go up 3 over 1 and then up 3 over 1. And you kept putting more and more dots. You connected those dots and you drew a line. Um, this is kind of the same thing, okay? This is the same idea. Uh, if I can kind of give you an, uh, a picture for what this sort of looks like. Let me do that really quick here. So the idea is this. Let, let's pretend that the exact curve of the function is going to be this black one here, okay? So, right? So let's just pretend that that's, that's our curve. Now, at this point right here, I'm going to call it y sub 0, x sub 0. Now, they're going to give us a slope, okay? They're going to give us a slope, and then what they're going to do is they're going to say, okay, move a small step along the curve, like to the right of that curve. So they call it the step H. So let's let's call it, let's put it here. All right, they're going to say move a small step H. And uh, what we want you to do is draw your slope. So here we go. I'm going to draw the slope on that point. Uh, hold on, let me try this again here. I want to put it a little lower. And where that slope intersects with your point H, put a point. And then what we want you to do is to figure out uh, the slope at H. So in other words, um, at this point, we want you to, to draw another tangent line at that point. So then... It would be tangent to the curve, but crossing through that blue point. So it's going to look something kind of like this. Okay, and again, we're taking another step H. Okay, so I'm going to kind of move over twice and up. Okay, so there's another step H. So that's twice H. 
from the original place. Okay, and at that point, they're going to say, okay, put another little dot right there. And according to this point, I want you to find uh, another line that's connecting these things using a tangent slope to the original graph, but going through that point, so it's going to look like this. Okay, and the idea is basically this. I know this kind of looks a little confusing, but if I can kind of redraw it over here. The idea is that by the time you're done, you're getting this weird looking like a set of points that are kind of mimicking your graph, right? We're, if they wanted to try to approximate numerical values to the graph, then they're doing this little by little. And you can see that it's kind of veering a little bit, but it is kind of staying close to it. So that's why Euler's method is considered a numerical uh, approximation, right? Just like Newton's method was an approximation of these things, right? So uh, this is just kind of like a numerical approximation. Now, I know with the technology we have now, Euler's method um, is not anything that's, that's like used all the time by hand. Um, but it is very useful. It's still something that's used in space travel. You guys actually saw the movie, I think, didn't you? Did you guys watch the movie uh, Hidden Figures? Yeah. So her, the way that they were able to solve how to get them back by using an orbit off the Earth and knowing when to fire, uh, if you guys can recall, she in her head remembers Euler's method deals with this. We can approximate the arc. Like we know what the arc's supposed to be. So using Euler's method, you kind of see right there the blue line, right? Maybe the perfect arc would have been that black line to come back into Earth's orbit. So using Euler's method and using smaller steps, of course, right? The bigger steps you make, the more out you're going to be. But using smaller steps, she was able to approximate like, hey, here's where they need to fire in order to get into the orbit that we need them to be in. Um, and even though Euler's method is like ancient, but still, it works, okay? It still works. So um, let me give you the formulas that we use. It's not a hard thing to do, by the way, okay? It's not like, oh my gosh, are they using it for space exploration? This is going to be tough. Uh, no, it, it's not terrible. So here is, let me uh, put right here, starting with a small step h. Okay, we can find our x and y values using, all right, so here's the formulas that we're going to need, x sub 1, or actually let's not call it x sub 1, let's call it x sub n, equal to x sub n minus 1 plus h. So notice it's a recursive formula, right? It's going to use the previous information to find the next value. And for y, y sub n minus 1, I'm sorry, y sub n equals to y sub n minus 1 plus h times big F of x sub n minus 1 comma y sub n minus 1. So that's a multiplication of h times the derivative value at the previous point. Okay? If you want to put a little dot here, you can, just to show multiplication. But you are multiplying those two things. So I just want to show you one quick example and then I'll give you like maybe one or two homework problems and that's it. This is not supposed to take a long time. The most important thing for uh, your Euler's method is that you guys know the formula. Once you know the formula, you can kind of do anything. They will usually give you the step you start with. Okay, they'll tell you. Uh, or maybe they won't, but they'll say, we're trying to go from an interval from zero to one in two steps. Well, that means h is not equal to 2. h would be half. Because if you're going to try to take two steps to travel one unit, then you got to take half a step and another half step, right? So sometimes they won't 
specifically tell you what the H value is, but they are going to tell you. They might say we're trying to get from zero to 10 uh, in an interval using four steps. Well, then the way you figure it out is you take 10 divided by four and that's gonna give you 2.5. So your H value is 2.5, right? So you sometimes may have to use a little bit of intuition to figure out your step value, or sometimes they're gonna tell you, hey, use 0 0.1 as your H value, okay? So they can be very obvious. Sometimes they can be a little more uh, cryptic, but but nothing ever. To, I've never seen anything so difficult where you couldn't find the H value by doing just a simple mathematic trick in your head. So usually it's pretty easy. So uh, let me give you the example. So the only example we have here, uh, example one, um, we're going to use Euler's method. Uh, to approximate the particular solution let's see what was that of the differential equation y prime equals to x minus y. Now remember, y prime is big F of x, y, right? So whenever we're doing the big F of whatever calculations, we're plugging it into that original function, okay? Now, I'm more interested not so much in finding the particular solutions because they don't make you do that really in uh, the AP exams, but they do make you figure out a couple of values. They'll make you try to find like the first three steps, four steps, that type of stuff. So I'm more interested in that uh, than anything. Okay, so we'll, we'll, I'm going to leave that up on top. We'll try doing that right now. Okay, um, they are going to tell us our step. So they're going to say, uh, and where it's passing through. So they're going to say passing through uh, zero, 01 using a step of 0 0.1. So that's my h value, okay? 0 0.1. So you're taking the tenth of a step. So um, let's find like three, maybe four of these things, okay? So let's find three of these values. Now, I know that x of 0 is 0 and that y of 0 is 1. That's my initial x and y value. Okay, so I want to find, let's find a 1, 2, and 3. Okay, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3. So to find x sub 1, I'm going to find, I'm going to put x sub 0 plus h, okay, according to the formula, right? It's x sub n minus 1 plus h. All right, to find y sub 1, I'm going to get y sub 0 plus h times f of x sub 0, y sub 0. Remember, it's always the previous values for your derivative. Okay, if you, if you look at the equation, it's f of x sub n minus 1, y sub n minus 1. So I'm just writing them out. So let's see, x sub 1 will be 0 plus 0 0.1, which is... Point one. That's my x sub 1. Okay, my y sub 1 is 1 plus 0 0.1 times, actually let me take a little extra step here, times f of, well, zero x sub 0 and y sub 0, that's 0 comma 1. Okay, I'm just going to write that out. Usually I don't, I just put times whatever the number is but just in case just to show you what I did now f of big f of zero one remember that's y prime right that means you're going to plug in a zero and a one into your y prime function which would be x minus y so x minus y is zero minus one so that's a negative one right so that means that I'm going to write one plus zero point one times negative one 
So that equals to 1 minus 0.1, so it's 0 0.9. Okay, so there's my x sub 1, y sub 1. So, what's x sub 2? So, x sub 2 will be x sub 1 plus h. Again, I'm just writing this out. You guys don't have to do it over and over again. I'm just doing it just to keep the work consistent here. And y sub 2 will be y sub 1 plus h times f of x sub 1 comma y sub 1. So to find x sub 2, I get my x sub 1, which is 0 0.1, and I add h, which is 0 0.1, so my answer is 0 0.2. So notice this isn't like extremely difficult to do. It's just you got to keep your work together so that you don't accidentally make a mistake in what you're calculating, right? Now, my y sub 2, that's y sub 1, which was 0 0.9. That's my y sub 1 plus h 0 0.1 times f of x sub 1, y sub 1, that's 0 0.1 comma 0 0.9. Okay, I'm just writing it out. So if I plug in my f, my big F of 0 0.1 comma 0 0.9 into my y prime, which is x minus y, what do I get? Yeah, negative 0 0.8. So this is going to be 0 0.9 plus 0 0.1 times negative 0 0.8 okay so when I uh, when I subtract this I end up with a 0 0.82 right so there's my y sub 2 we'll just do one more and like I said that's all I really want you guys to do okay um, pretty easy thing to, to learn. But let's just do it one more time here. x sub 3. So according to that, this is x sub 2 plus h. y sub 3 would be y sub 2 plus h times big F of x sub 2, y sub 2. Now, x sub 2 is 0 0.2 plus h is 0 0.1, so that's going to be 0 0.3. Okay, um, so let's uh, do the y sub 3 part, so that's equal to y sub 2, which is 0 0.82 plus h, which is 0 0.1, times, well, x, uh, big x sub 2, y sub 2, that's going to be f of x sub 2, which is 0 0.2 comma 0 0.82. So 0 0.82 plus 0 0.1. Um, it's y was it x? Yeah, x minus y. So it's 0 0.2 minus 0 0.82. Okay, so you're subtracting those. So your result, when you subtract those times 0 0.1, then you add 0 0.82 is 0 0.758. So if we had to write these out in terms of a, um, of a chart, let me just kind of put that here, x, y. So we started off with 0, 1. And then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Okay, I'm assuming you probably catch the pattern for your x values, right? They just keep going up by 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 every time, right? And our y values, uh, they were 0 0.9, 0 0.82, 0 0.758.
Well, the answer that they want, they want you in this one to find the exact particular solution. But the way you do that is by graphing it. Okay. Um, and, and you're going to have to let something tell you the particular solution. I'll see if I can try this out. Let's see if, let's see if this will work. I'm not really sure if I can get this to work through Desmos, but maybe, maybe it might work. Um, but let's see if we can plot these and kind of get an idea of what this graph looks like. So let's see, but are we okay with, uh, with that? With how to find those values? Okay. Cause like I said, that's kind of the important part to doing Euler's method in the AP exam finding those values. So as long as you know the equations, you'll be fine, I think. And, and don't forget that the big F of XY means your differential equation, your Y prime, okay? That means your derivative. So uh, let's go to Desmos. Let's see if this actually will do it. I don't know if we're just wasting time here, but I'm going to go ahead and stop the video, but let's find out if this will work for us. Uh, and I'll give you your homework in a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and write down the homework. Your homework is going to be on page 413, numbers 73 to 75. I know that's not a lot, um, but I want to make sure you guys only do n equal to 4 iterations, not 10, or else you're going to be doing 30 different calculations. So we'll keep it at 12. 